Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. We begin this hour with breaking news from Capitol Hill. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says President Trump and others in power, quote, provoked the deadly January 6th siege on Capitol Hill. This is the most direct rebuke of the president we've heard from McConnell since the riots unfolded on Capitol Hill two weeks ago. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. And they tried to use fear and violence to stop a specific proceeding of the first branch of the federal government, which they did not like. But we pressed on. We stood together and said an angry mob would not get veto power over the rule of law in our nation, not even for one night. We certified the people's choice for their 46th president. Tomorrow, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris will be sworn in. We'll have a safe and successful inaugural right here on the west front of the Capitol the space that President Bush 41 called democracy's front porch. And then we'll move forward. Our work for the American people will continue as it has for more than 230 years. There are serious challenges that our nation needs to continue confronting. But there will also be great and hopeful opportunities for us to seize. And CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes joins me now on the phone. Hi, Nancy. So this was a harsh rebuke from Mitch McConnell. Did you expect to hear this on the president's last full day in office? And why do you think he did it? You know, I really didn't expect it, Tanya. And uh, what was really notable to me was that, first, uh, I don't think an impeachment manager could have put it any better than the leader of the Senate put it. Uh, he directly linked the violence to President Trump. And what I thought was really interesting is that he also tried to draw a very clear link between the president and an attack on another branch of government. Remember, he said the mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president, another powerful people people, and then they tried to use that violence to stop a specific proceeding of the first branch of the federal government. It's no accident that he put it that way. Uh, basically, the very definition of uh, an insurrection or sedition is taking up arms against another branch of government. And it, it appears that he was trying to draw a very explicit link here between what the president said and the fact that uh, another branch of government, in this case the le legislative branch, was directly targeted by the people that the president was speaking to. It was really a, a stunning comment. And so, Nancy, to your point, what do you think this will mean for President Trump's upcoming impeachment trial? Well, to me, it seemed like Leader McConnell was trying to send a message to his fellow Republicans in the Senate, who ultimately will be voting on whether to acquit or convict the president, that they should keep an open mind and that uh, they should hear all the evidence uh, and really think very seriously about uh, convicting this president for inciting an insurrection. And I think part of the reason that he's doing that is because we have seen a number of Senate Republicans come out and say, not necessarily that they are going to vote to acquit, but that they're leaning that way, that maybe they don't think it's constitutional to hold this trial after the president has already left office, or that they don't really think that the president meant for people to become violent. Well, Leader McConnell, their leader, is saying he really does think that the president wanted them to become violent because he wanted them to stop a legislative proceeding that he didn't like, which was that the Congress was engaged in certifying the results of the Electoral College tally. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that this is really striking from McConnell, and it really shows that he may feel that there are advantages to convicting this president, which would take, after all, 17 Republicans to join all the Democrats to do so. Obviously, President Trump will have left office, um, but uh, you can um, prevent him from running again in 2024, which would have a, a major effect on, on Republicans in Congress. Uh, you could also potentially uh, prohibit him from getting intelligence briefings, uh, things like that. It would certainly damage him politically in, in many ways. And uh, it sounds to me that 
Leader McConnell may be more committed than we initially realized to seeing this trial through. And um, certainly, if he felt that it was unconstitutional to hold this trial, he would have said so, and he didn't. That is very interesting. But, you know, a lot of Democrats also say that uh, McConnell is not entirely blameless in the matter. I mean, of course, he never uh, came out as strongly against certifying the Electoral College votes as some of his colleagues, and he did, you know, warn his colleagues not to join that effort. But, you know, some Democrats criticized him by saying he could have come out more forcefully at the beginning and, and not been so favorable to the president's extended legal efforts once it was clear those were going nowhere. Where? Absolutely. I mean, it was obvious to foreign leaders that uh, Joe Biden had won the election. It was obvious to everyone in Joe Biden's party that he had won the election. And it was obvious to aides who were talking to us privately that Joe Biden had won the election. And yet, Leader McConnell would not answer our repeated questions about whether Joe Biden had won. He kept saying, well, you know, there are legal challenges that are ongoing, so we can't say anything. He, he kept that line up long after it was very clear that the president president's legal team didn't have any actual proof of widespread fraud. They were losing case after case. The cases were being thrown out because they were frivolous. So, you know, he really could have stepped up much, much earlier than he did to say that this is over and I congratulate President-elect Biden on winning the election. He didn't because he had his own strategic reasons for for holding out. He wanted the president's help in these two Senate races in Georgia. He didn't want to anger the president before Congress needed to pass a, a COVID relief package at the end of the year. Um, and so he chose uh, not to state the obvious. And because he wasn't stating the obvious, a lot of other Republicans felt that they had leeway uh, to, to hold out and, and, and not congratulate President-elect Biden as well. And of course, that contributed to the notion among the president President's supporters that there must be something uh, suspicious about Joe Biden's win because uh, even the entire Republican establishment was not coming out and acknowledging that Biden had won. So you're you're absolutely right that um, that Leader McConnell was a you know he held out a lot longer than he he could have. All right. Well, Nancy Cordes, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this breaking story. We appreciate it. Sure thing.